Hello, everyone, and welcome to the November 2023 Sky Report. I'm Vanessa, and I'm here to be your Sky Guide again. To start off this month, Jupiter will be at opposition on November 2nd. This means it will rise just after the sun sets, and it will be at its closest for the year. This year, that's about 370 million miles from the Earth. The next time we're this close to Jupiter will be as we approach the year 2033. Next up is my favorite time of year. On Sunday, November 5th at 2 a.m., if you have clocks that need to be set, set them back one hour into Pacific Standard Time. This month, we're going to have many evenings when the moon is close to a planet. To start off, early in the morning on November 9th, the moon and Venus will be only about a degree apart in the eastern sky. Wake up early to watch them rise before the sun. The Leonid meteor shower starts on November 3rd and is expected to end on November 30th. The peak of the Leonid meteor shower will be on the evening of November 17th into the early morning of the 18th. The radiant of the shower will be in the head of Leo the lion and will be high in the sky by 3 a.m. The moon will be a waxing crescent during the peak, so it's not expected to disrupt viewing since it will set a couple of hours after sunset. Let's take a look at what the moon will be up to for the rest of the month. Here is our November lunar calendar. Last quarter moon is on November 5th. New moon is on November 13th. First quarter is on November 20th. And the full moon is on November 27th. The moon and Saturn will be very close to each other in the sky on November 19th and November 20th. If you watch over those two nights, you'll see the moon travel right past Saturn in the sky as you see here. The two will actually be at their closest while they're not in our sky in between those two nights. So that'll be a sight for the other Earthlings on the other side of the planet. Another planetary close encounter with the moon will be on November 25th. The moon and Jupiter will be less than two degrees apart and they'll be close together in the sky early in the evening. They'll be at their closest at about 3 a.m. as they start to set in the west. A few hours after the close approach of Jupiter and the moon, Venus will be close to the bright star Spica in Virgo. Both will appear in the east-southeast of the sky at about 4.30 a.m. Here is an image of Jupiter that was taken on October 4th. Highlighted here are the swirls in Jupiter's clouds and the great red spot. Here's a photo of Jupiter taken on October 19th from Griffith Observatory telescopes. This is a transit of the moons Io and Ganymede. The shadow of the moon Io can be prominently seen on the surface of the planet, and the shadow of the moon Ganymede is just starting to show. And here we have an image of Saturn that was taken on October 5th. And finally, here is Venus. This image was an infrared image taken on October 4th. All month long, we will start to see our winter constellations along with the winter hexagon. The winter hexagon is made up of some of the brightest stars in our winter sky, Capella of Auriga, Aldebaran, the Eye of the Bull in Taurus, Rigel of Orion, Sirius, the Eye of Canis Major, Procyon of Canis Minor, and Pollux of the constellation Gemini. These constellations will be high in our sky throughout the coming winter. Well, that's all I have for November. Thanks for joining this month, and I hope to see you again in December.